Let's find some relative extrema and intervals of increasing and decreasing for this super long function f of x is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 24x plus 92. We want to remember that whether you're just asked for increasing and decreasing or just asked for relative extrema, it's the same exact two steps for both. So our first step is going to be to find any critical numbers. So we're gonna set the derivative equal to zero. So our first step, take the derivative, which is gonna be the derivative x cubed is three x squared. Next term, we would have negative three times two is gonna be negative six x. Derivative of negative 24 x is negative 24, and derivative of the constant at the end, that plus 92 is just gonna be zero. So here's my derivative, I'm setting it equal to zero. I have an x squared and an x, so I'm going to factor this to solve. So one thing I could do to factor this is I see that I have a 3 as my leading coefficient in front of x squared. I'm going to pull that out and see if I can plug it into each of these. That way I don't have a leading coefficient out front that's bigger than 1. So I'm going to pull out the 3. 3 times x squared would give me 3x squared. 3 times negative 2x would give me negative 6x. And then 3 times negative 8 would give me negative 24. And now I'm going to try to reverse FOIL. So I'm going to multiply to be a negative 8 and add up to be a negative 2. So if I want to multiply to be a negative 8, I must have a positive times a negative to multiply to be a negative. And I want to add it to be a negative 2, which tells me the bigger factor must be the negative 1. So factors of 8 that differ by 2. So 8 and 1 differ by 7. 4 times 2 would give us 8, and they differ by 2. So we're going to do a negative 4 and a positive 2 would multiply to be a negative 8 and add up to be negative 2. We're going to set that equal to zero. These three things can only multiply to be zero if at least one of these factors is zero, right? Something times zero would give us zero. So we're going to see if we can make any of these equal zero. So my first factor is three. I want to set that equal to zero. Well, three is always three. That can't be zero. If it was three X, yes, we could make it zero, but when it's just a regular three, that's always three. So my next factor is X plus two. I want to see what makes that zero. I could subtract 2 from both sides, so x is negative 2. And then we have x minus 4. I want to see if I can make that 0. We could add 4 to both sides, so x is 4. So we have two critical numbers here, two things that make the derivative 0. And they are able to be plugged into the original function, which is the other thing. It has to be in the domain of the original function. Can't make you divide by zero. These, of course, go into the original function because we have a polynomial. We remember that all polynomials are always continuous. You can plug in any x value into them, and nothing's going to make you divide by zero or have the square root of a negative number because it's a polynomial. So we have two critical numbers. We can already answer part of this. Here are the two places that make the derivative 0. x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. Be careful not to ever write this as negative 2 comma 4. That indicates you're giving me a point and that negative 2 is the x and 4 is the y. And this is not an x and a y. They are both x values. So I'm going to write them just like that. And then my second step is to make a sign chart. This is the step where I'm going to figure out where am I increasing and decreasing and if I have any relative max or min. So the first thing that goes on my sign chart are my critical numbers, where the derivative is 0. So negative 2 and 4 are both important. They make the derivative 0. And now I can choose any number to the left and to the right of those x values. So to the left of negative 2, I can choose any number. I'm going to choose maybe negative 10. I want to remember that the value of the derivative isn't important, but the sign of it is, whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going to plug into the derivative. It's easiest for me to plug into the factored form. That way I don't have to use a calculator, and I can just figure out the sign of it in my head. So I'm going to plug into this factored form. The first factor is 3. Well, that's positive. The second factor, plugging in negative 10 to it, negative 10 plus 2 is going to be negative still. And then this last factor, negative 10 minus 4, is going to be negative. 
So two negatives multiply to be a positive. So I'd end up with a positive times a positive. This first interval is positive. If the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing or is it decreasing? It's increasing. So we figured out that first interval has a positive derivative, which means the function's increasing. My next interval is between negative two and four. This is my favorite interval because I love to be able to plug in zero. I think that's the easiest one to plug in. And zero's on there. So I'm gonna plug into the derivative. So the first factor of the derivative is the three, which is positive. Then we have zero plus two, which is positive. Plugging in zero into the last factor, zero minus four is negative. So these two positives would be positive times a negative though, is gonna make it negative. A negative first derivative means the original function is decreasing. So I switch, I was increasing to decreasing at this first critical number, I was increasing to decreasing. So this means it's a relative max there. All right, we're making some progress. We're gonna finish our sign chart and then we'll write a conclusion about all of them. So my last piece of the sign chart is picking any number after four to test. I'm gonna use positive 10. You could use five if you want to. I'm gonna plug into the derivative always. You never plug into the original function on a sign chart because you wanna know the sign of the derivative. The first part of the derivative is a positive three. The second part is x plus two. So 10 plus two is gonna be positive. And then x minus four. So 10 minus four is also gonna be positive three positives are going to multiply to be a positive. You could use your calculator on this, but I think it's just um, more airproof to just think about the number by plugging it in um, using your head. But either way is fine. Either way, you should get that the derivative is positive on the interval, which means the original function was increasing. So if we think about this critical number, is it a relative max, min, or neither? Well, we switch from decreasing to increasing which means we have a relative min. Okay, so now we're gonna draw some conclusions. So first of all, I'm gonna do the increasing and decreasing, that way I don't even need to grab my calculator quite yet. So increasing was before our first critical number and after our second critical number. So those two intervals had a positive derivative. So I'm gonna write that as before negative two, so negative infinity, to negative two, union 10 to infinity. Be careful, that's a mistake. Try to figure out what's wrong with that interval. What did I do there? The negative infinity to negative two is good, but then I wrote 10 to infinity. 10 was a random test value. I could have used 30, I could have used five. Make sure you're only switching at critical numbers. This is from four on to infinity. Never use any random test values as part of your answers down here. Increasing and decreasing only switch out critical numbers. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I write this decreasing interval. It's not negative 2 to 0 or 0 to 4 or something like that. 0 was a random test value. It's between my two critical numbers, negative 2 and 4. So you might want to write yourself a note. Only switch at critical numbers. You don't want to put any random test values as part of your answer there. We just made those up. We picked them randomly. And then relative max and min point is the same thing. They only happen at critical numbers. So when we're looking at relative max and relative min, there's only two places where they could occur, at negative 2 and 4. No other place is going to have relative extrema. It has to be a critical number. So for the max, that was at negative 2. And it wants it as a point. So a point means x comma y. So I'm going to take negative 2, and I'm not going to plug it into the derivative because that would just give me 0 out. It's a critical number. I want to plug it back into this original function here. The only time you plug into the original function is when you're looking for a y value. And when I plug into the original function, I get 120. You could definitely pause the video, plug it on your calculator, make sure you get the same thing. Same thing with plugging in four. My other critical number is a relative min. I'm gonna plug it into the original function. So I'm gonna do four cubed minus three times four squared minus 24 times four plus 92, plugging into this really long original function up here. And the y value for four is 12. 
there's my relative max, my relative min, and my intervals of increasing and decreasing all come from doing these same two steps over and over again. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and make a sign chart by plugging into the derivative, and then draw your conclusions. And if you have a point, that's when you finally plug into the original function, is for the y values of that point.